Hey everybody, this is Sarah with Your Ideal Self and today I'm going to talk to you about a topic that I think about a lot because I think about weird things that maybe some people don't always think about. It's about personality, it's about opinion, it's about preference. Let's start this with a little story about Sarah. When I was a fifth grader, I didn't think I had a personality. Now, why did I not think I had a personality? I was in fifth grade. What the heck did I know about having a personality? Well, as a side note, this actually kind of freaked me out a lot. I was afraid I didn't have a personality because I didn't have opinions. I didn't have preferences. Now, when you're in fifth grade, what kinds of opinions and what kinds of preferences can you have? They range from what do you like on your pizza? What do you want to do after school today? What do you like to do for fun? It's very minor type things. You're not talking about politics or religion in fifth grade, not, not the normal kids. But obviously this mattered to me. I felt like I didn't have any preferences or any opinions. And that has followed me throughout life. I've always admired people with strong opinions and strong preferences throughout my life. I don't know if that's something that you guys have done. I have. I always looked up to people who who had strong preferences about what they want on their pizza and about religion and politics. I know it's weird to like group it together. There's the serious topics like who should you vote for and then there are not serious topics like should there be pineapple on your pizza. I know people who might debate strongly about both those things. And I've always admired those people. They have passion and they have a common ground with others. Like I, I've been in the middle of discussions with people and they really strongly believe whatever they are saying and they talk so fervently and they agree so strongly. And then the other people in the conversation say, yes, I totally agree with that. That is amazing. Or that sucks. Or I abhor that as well. Opinions, 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 strong opinions. But then again, there's the negative side of having such a strong opinion or preference, like the fact that you can get angry when you have such an opinion or preference. You can work yourself up. You can get so annoyed because you're a liberal and you just hate these Republicans so much that you could tear their heads off and you feel like you have to go on Facebook and just cause havoc because you want to spread your opinion and you believe so strongly in it. So that's the negative side of it. And me, yeah, I have a side. I have a political side. I have a religious side. I have a environmentalist side. I have a what do I, how I care about pet side. I don't really like Christmas music in December, but am I gonna rant about it? Am I gonna say, oh my god, can you believe that they are playing Christmas music at, in October? People, they do it earlier in every year. What do you have to get all riled up about? I don't know, but I am the chill person. This is, this is something I've been pondering. If you are chill, does that go hand in hand with having less of an opinion? I also happen to be someone who's very calm and I don't think of myself as having, I mean, I don't, I don't, I just go with the flow. I'm kind of flexible. I mean, this, that's my whole personality. And I realize that I do like that about myself. So if it means that I don't get worked up about things or my emotions are more under control, then yeah, I'll be happy that I don't have much of a preference. So part of me thinks that it, that it means that I'm more open to new experiences maybe. And just me in general, I am good with regulating emotion. I don't feel strongly about a certain food in particular. Like if we're gonna go to Subway, then you could change plans on me last minute and say, okay, instead of Subway, we're gonna go to this Thai place. And then I'm just gonna go, oh, well, I like Subway, but you know, I'm just, I'm gonna go with the Thai place, why not? But then I wonder if me not having preference is me being indecisive. Maybe it is. I couldn't tell you, I can't decide. It just opened up a lot of things and this is just like a personal pondering video. For whatever reason, it has followed me through my life that I have wanted strongly to have a strong opinion. This is a, 
thought-provoking question I have for you. Are you indecisive or without opinion or without preference? Do you feel strongly about opinions? And what does that say about you as a person? My husband, I think, is a strongly opinion person and he has the emotional passion, which can be anger, to back it up. But is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. You tell me. This is Sarah with Your Ideal Self. I hope that was thought-provoking for you, and I will see you next time.